Audi's R8 Spider gets sharper, smarter and faster in second generation form. Turning away from the tide towards turbocharging, it uses an orally magnificent, normally aspirated 5.2 litre V10 and promises race bred but road ready four wheel drive performance, able to justify its newfound supercar status. Rivals must take this car very seriously indeed. Create a credible supercar and it's almost expected that you'll make it available not only in coupe form but also in open topped guys. Audi's R8 delivered on that brief in first generation form but there were a few compromises to be made in choosing the convertible version. Now that is not the case with this much more sophisticated Mark II R8 Spider model. As any automotive engineer will tell you, the problem in creating a cabrio from a coupe lies in the huge reduction in torsional stiffness that you'll create by lopping off the roof that would normally provide much of it. And it's taken a great deal of modern technology to get close to sorting that problem, much of which wasn't available to Audi when they introduced the first generation version of this R8 Spider back in 2011. Uh, as a result, back then, choosing an open-topped R8 over the fixed-top version well, it wasn't really something that an enthusiast would ever have done. It just didn't feel as sharp. As a result, the ragtop version of this ultimate Audi sports car remained a boutique buyer's choice. You certainly would never have seen one of those on a track day. But things have changed. The Ingolstadt brand has based this second generation R8 model on an ASF, Audi space frame, that this time around has been fundamentally fortified with high-tech carbon fibre reinforced polymer. Now that has made an awful lot of difference, especially to this spider variant, improving the structural rigidity of this model by a massive 50%. Now according to Ingolstadt, uh, that has created the stiffest open top car ever made. At the same time, Audi has reduced weight, added in torque vectoring for improved corner turning and sharpened up the quattro four-wheel drive system too. Now we're promised that the result would be a very different proposition, a proper driver's machine, a proper supercar. It certainly has a proper supercar engine. While rivals are determined to turbocharge power, Audi has stuck with the fabulously vocal, normally aspirated 5.2 litre V10 that's also used by Lamborghini. And what has created ought to be the fastest, the most powerful and the most desirable open-topped Audi ever made. Is it though? Time to put this car to the test. As we said when we reviewed this second generation R8 in its coupe guys, all the ingredients are here for a world beating sports car. Relatively lightweight, an agile chassis and a proper mid-mounted configuration for the glorious throbbing engine. But where Porsche and the exotic Italian brands have had nearly 50 years to blend those things into world beating perfection, Audi had to start from a clean sheet at the turn of the century with this R8. In the original version, that didn't seem to matter, it was brilliant. This second generation model though is a pricier and more powerful thing, a bona fide supercar with a much tougher set of rivals to beat. Is it up to the challenge? Well you can't help thinking so once you press the red starter button on the steering wheel. <laughs> Listen to that. I mean, if it's drama you're after, then this engine delivers it. The power plant in question is a uh, 5.2-litre normally aspirated V10. Audi spurning the current trend towards turbocharging that even Ferrari has found it impossible to resist. It'll scare small animals and children. It'll infuriate your neighbours. And it's exactly the sound that a car of this kind should make. <laughs> There's no entry-level V8 option this time around, and there's no manual gearbox alternative either. Uh, these features both inappropriate to a supercar segment in which over 500 PS is routine and close to 200 MPH capability expected. Uh, in this case, 540 PS is on offer, although Audi has also tuned a V10 Plus version of this same power plant to offer over 610 PS. 
Either way, that engine comes mated to seven-speed S-Tronic paddle shift auto transmission, and it uh, comes capable of suitably sensational statistics. 62 miles an hour is just 3.6 seconds away from rest, uh, on the way to 197 miles an hour in the standard version. And that is only the merest fraction slower than you go in the equivalent coupe model. It's 125 kilos lighter. Predictably, your sensors tell you the opposite. Uh, we thought the R8 Coupe felt thrillingly fast, but with the roof down in this Spider model, the aural sensations under hard acceleration are even more electrifying, especially through tunnels where you revel in the kind of aural intoxication that turbocharged rivals just can't emulate. It's a symphony that you can properly orchestrate too uh, via a button here on the steering wheel that's provided if you opted for the extra cost sport exhaust system that we just think you have to have. This is one of up to four circular satellite controls that have been added onto this second generation R8 Spider Models wheel. Uh, the other key one being that to activate the Drive Select dynamic driving system. Drive Select, as usual with setups of this sort, allows you to alter the throttle response, the steering, uh, the stability control thresholds, and the gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive, the sort of progress that you want to make. In a standard form, uh, the system offers comfort and dynamic modes, plus there's an auto option if you can't decide, and an individual setting too, if you want to configure the various elements to suit your personal preferences. If you go for the more advanced steering wheel that we've got here, uh, you get even more choices, courtesy of an extra performance mode. So that's uh, apparently intended for track use, but which, of course, uh, you'll probably want to play with at every opportunity. This delivers further dry, wet or snow sub-modes, each one selectable from this smaller satellite control just below the main drive select button. The other thing Drive Select can influence is ride and suspension, although it'll only be able to do that if you've paid extra for the uh, clever Audi Magnetic Ride Damper Control System. Now, this is a feature that is really well worth having. It allows you to focus your R8 when you're in the mood and dial it right back for comfortable cruising when you're not. Now, that is important given that Audi wants this model to be capable of the kind of daily driving lifestyle that you simply wouldn't want to put up with in an Italian supercar. Hence, a level of urban manoeuvrability that belies the low seating position and this second generation model's extra width. Yet, it has to still, when it's called upon, deliver brutal performance, tremendous traction and astonishing agility. Does it? Well, the speed sensation uh, we've already touched on. There's launch control to fire you off the line with a flex of your right foot, and that'll send the rev needle shooting around the color-changing rev counter that you get in performance mode. Um, now, if it isn't flashing red as the steering wheel paddle shifters change up, then you're really not trying hard enough. Audi talks of a 20% improvement in throttle response this time around, and you can really feel that as the gauge flares up to the 8,700 RPM red line and never strays more than 2,000 RPM from it as the twin clutch gearbox throws ratio after short stack ratio with rifle crack speed, and the car hurls itself at the horizon with animal savagery. As for the corners, well, it turns, it grips, and it goes, courtesy of the kind of four-wheel drive system that rivals from Mercedes, uh, from Ferrari, McLaren, and Aston Martin make you do without. Now, this one's an updated Quattro setup that's able to flash 100% of torque to either axle instantly on demand. And as a result, traction levels are so high that anyone starting to approach this car's limits on a public road will quickly make themselves a target for the local constabulary. As for agility, well, at this time around, that's aided by lighter weight and a torque vectoring system that deals with tight turns of speed by dialing out understeer and channeling power to the wheels that can best use it. Uh, the biggest factor influencing agility, though, is that this uh, second-generation R8 Spider model can boast a massive 50% improvement in torsional rigidity. That, in turn, has allowed Audi to merely tweak the R8 Coupe suspension stiffness for this open-top model, rather than having to significantly soften the settings up, as would have been necessary had the body structure been less rigid. A Coupe R8 is still 40% stiffer than this Spider variant, but with this second-generation model, you don't feel that difference anything like as much as you did with the previous-generation car. 
It's a pity then that the benefits of all this effort have been somewhat masked by an electrical steering system lacking the final touch of feel that transforms the driving experience of a rival Porsche 911 from being merely good to being absolutely fantastic. As competitors have found, adding in an optional speed variable uh, steering setup doesn't solve this problem. In fact, it arguably exacerbates it. Now, we've got that extra cost uh, dynamic steering feature here, and it still doesn't offer the, quite the feedback that we'd like. How does engineers really need to learn from Porsche here? That apart, finding it very, very hard to criticize this car. Now, we worried that in second generation form, it might have lost a little of the earlier magic, but instead, the miles are clicked by. We've been reminded over and over again just why we loved it in the first place. Aside from steering feel at the helm, it's an improvement on its predecessor in every verifiable regard. It's easy to acclimatize to, it's free of nasty habits, and orally awesome. We love the new tech too, particularly the virtual cockpit instruments and the optional laser light headlamps, all of it creating a genuinely complete and very special product that's also accessible to a relatively unskilled driver buying in a supercar segment that's full of faintly frightening options. And we'd certainly choose our R8 in this open top spider guys any day of the week. With a roof down like this, the lack of buffeting is truly impressive, especially if you keep the electrically retracting rear window raised and clip the clip-on fabric wind deflect into place. When the weather clouds over, uh, the top can be raised in just 20 seconds and at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour. And once the hood is up, <laughs> you'll get uh, levels of cruising refinement that are almost indistinguishable from those of the coupe variant. Now, if the weather remains inclement but you still want to better hear that engine, then you can lower that electric rear window and revel in the fact that all that sound and fury is authentic rather than artificially processed through a sound actuator as the amplified exhaust note is on Audi's lesser sports car, the uh, TT. Our summary here then is just as it was with the R8 Coupe. If you happen to be someone seeking to graduate from the lower to the upper, more powerful tier of supercar ownership, then owning one of these is the perfect way to ease that transition. And in an R8 Spider, the whole experience is one you'll particularly want to remember. Visually, the R8 Spider remains much as it was, a distinctive cocktail of low-slung curves and delightful design extravagance. Though in this second-generation version, the influential shape of the previous model is expressed in a tauter, more technically precise way. As before, we're talking Ferrari, but with a German twist. Now, whether you think Audi should have more fundamentally changed the look this time around uh, comes down to personal perspective. Aesthetic continuity certainly hasn't done Porsche's 911 any harm over the last half a century, though. Uh, this car doesn't have that one's understated elegance, but it does look more exotic and exclusive, especially so in this Spider convertible body style, just as a six-figure supercar should. Now, this Mark II model is 14 millimeters shorter and 36 millimeters wider than its predecessor, uh, with unchanged height and wheelbase measurements. The fabric top itself weighs only 44 kilos, and it opens and closes in just 20 seconds at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour. Now, you would usually activate that process from inside the car, but you can also do so from outside by using this standard advanced key. As you can see, uh, the hood mechanism's acrobatics deliver an intricate piece of street theatre. The hood compartment cover moving fluidly on two seven-link hinges. Uh, when closed, the top integrates neatly into the design line, stretching low above the body and extending to the rear in two long, slender fins. Now the fins surround a rear window that has its own retracting mechanism, and that's activated by a press of this button below the gear stick. Now that means that even when the weather's inclement and you've got the roof up like this, you can still retract that glass pane and get a richer dose of the wonderful V10 engine's aural fireworks. But of course, for that, there's nothing quite like having the top down. Now the main button for this uh, is right next to the other one, activating a folding process that sees the soft top sandwiching itself in a Z formation into the flat storage compartment that's over the engine. 
with the roof open, having the rear window up can reduce buffeting, but to fully deal with that, you'll be better off installing the proper clip-on textile wind deflector that comes included with the car and which is stored in the boot. Now, Andy says, with this in place, wind flow around the head can be reduced by up to 90%. Uh, otherwise, the design of this Spider model is familiar from its coupe counterpart. So, as with that body style, uh, horizontal lines define the front end with its huge sculptural single frame radiator grille. Uh, these large trapezoidal air inlets feature vertical slats matching the daytime running light blades and the wedge shaped headlamps that sit above. Uh, here, the blade in each light is finished in anodized blue, designating the addition of Audi's optional laser light technology. That's there to double the range of the high beam. Uh, in profile, owners of the first generation RX Spider model will pick up on the design change uh, that further picks out what is arguably this Mark II model's most unique feature, these distinctive and customizable side blades. Now these sit just below a now more flowing shoulder line that's gently massaged by contours above the wheels that are supposed to reference the quattro four-wheel drive system. The door handles, which were previously prominent, are now almost invisibly positioned in the shoulder line shadow, uh, while lower down, the light edges of the side sills echo those of Audi's Le Mans winning R18 e-tron Quattro race car. More beautiful detailing is provided by this motorsport style aluminium fuel lid integrated into the rear wing on the right hand side of this car. At the rear, there are further race references, primarily with the visible mechanical components that you can see through the mesh venting that lies below the dual-like tail lights, uh, each lamp incorporating 118 individual LEDs and set above dynamic rear turn indicators. Now, this is the part of the car where you most notice the extra width that's provided by this second-generation design, something emphasised by this enormous diffuser with its distinctive slats that flank the two trapezoidal tailpipes of the exhaust system. Uh, this large hood compartment is made of CFRP, carbon fibre reinforced polymer, and it has two cowls, each of which encloses uh, three ventilation slits and, and which can feature personalisable trimming. We've got gloss carbon here. Carbon fibre reinforced polymer doesn't uh, only feature on the panel work, it's also a major constituent of this car's lightweight ASF, Audi space frame construction. Now combining this material with aluminium has not only helped to make this car 25 kilos lighter this time around, but it also contributes to a massive 50% improvement in torsional rigidity. And that's enough, according to Audi, to make this the stiffest open top car that money can buy. Now inside, you're introduced to what the English Step brand calls a luxury level racing atmosphere and an interior that remains an object lesson in how to package a two-seat sports car. Now true, you don't get the exotic feel of a Ferrari or a Lamborghini in here, but personally, we'll trade that for the extra space, the fantastic build quality and the better all-round visibility provided by an R8. Audi is much better at ergonomics than most of its rivals too. You can't, for example, ever imagine an Ingolstadt designer ever putting the indicators on the steering wheel in the irritating way that they are on a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. As before, one of the cockpit's key distinguishing features is what the stylists call the monoposto, a stylized large arc that encircles the driver's area of the cockpit, starting at the door and ending in the centre tunnel. But if that's familiar, there's also plenty in this second generation model uh, that's different too. The change is beginning with this uh, grippy, flat-bottomed R8 performance steering wheel. Extra round satellite buttons have been added to control engine startup and driving dynamics, Plus, there's an extra cost steering wheel that you can add, and we've got it here, that includes these two further smaller round controls. A dial on the left uh, to set the car up for different weather conditions, and a button on the right to alter the exhaust wow. note. A further evolution lies with the uh, deletion of the previous model's centre dash MMI monitor. In its place is this large air vent with vertical louvers that are supposed to reference the air intake of a race car. Uh, these are positioned above three cylindrical chrome trimmed climate control dials that are modelled on the look of aircraft jet turbines. As for all the infotainment functionality, well, as with Ingolstadt's humbler TT Roadster, that's all been relocated to what we're supposed to call the Audi Virtual Cockpit, a 12.3-inch high-resolution instrument binnacle display that completely replaces the usual set of conventional dials. 
As with the TT, pressing a view button on the steering wheel enables you to toggle between various different virtual cockpit options. Now, the classic view gives you a prominent speedo and rev counter, while the alternative uh, infotainment view uh, will bring functions like the navigation map to the fore instead. Now, something you don't get with a virtual cockpit display in an ordinary TT is the third performance viewing option that sees a large central rev counter dominating the center of the screen around which you can configure in uh, various smaller virtual gauges, including a G-meter, a lap timer, and various readouts of that date on things like temperatures and tire pressures. Now, whatever setting you choose, uh, the telephone, the media, trip, and car settings can be dealt with by voice control, uh, handled from steering wheel buttons, or covered by fiddling with the touch-sensitive uh, center MMI controller below the gear stick. Uh, you can deal with audio functionality that way too, which in this particular case allows control of an optional and glorious sounding 13-speaker Bang & Olufsen advanced sound system. Not everything's perfect, of course. Uh, the whole virtual cockpit concept carries with it the disadvantage that the front seat passenger can no longer reach the stereo system. Well, in theory, they can't anyway. Actually, if you peruse the handbook, uh, it revealed that there's the option of tracing commands with your fingertips on the surface of the silver-trimmed rotary MMI infotainment system dial that you'll find on the center console just behind the gear stick. Um, other issues, well, they're really down to niggly things. The heartbeat sound effect this R8 insists on delivering when you power off, well, that's simply annoying. And don't much uh, like these rather small steering wheel paddle shifters, which is disappointing because these are, after all, one of your most important points of interaction with the car. Trimming mistakes of that sort are otherwise notable by their absence. All the seat options feature fine perforated nappa leather that, as an option, can be extended across the dashboard and right around the cabin as it has been here. The whole effect, in this case, completed with exquisite optional carbon atlas and gloss carbon interior trimming. As for practicalities, well, there's more than you might expect in terms of cabin storage, uh, with a big glove box compensating to some extent for these tiny door pockets. Uh, the cup holders that you would have to do without in this car's Lamborghini Huracan cousin are here, present and correct in this lidded compartment between the seats. Plus, there's a key slot to the left of this lovely aircraft-style gear stick and storage space ahead of it that includes twin USB connections, an aux-in point and a 12-volt socket. And it also has an optional wireless charging pad for your phone. And beyond that, well, were we to be graduating into this car from a 911 Cabriolet, uh, we'd miss the little rear seats that Porsche gives you there. So useful for chucking a jacket or a designer shopping bag onto. In an R8 Coupe, Audi compensates for the lack of this by providing a space behind the seats that's large enough to take a golf bag. Now that is missing on this Spider model. Instead, there is just this little vertical storage compartment behind your left shoulder, uh, the lower part of which uh, holds the media equipment. Now that lack of space behind the seats is actually quite significant because uh, the room you actually get in the boot is extremely restricted. At 112 litres in size, uh, that's the same as in an R8 coupe. This trunk offers uh, less than half the amount of luggage space that you'd get in, well, say, a rival Mercedes AMG GTC Roadster. Nor does it help that precious cubic inches here are uh, occupied by a bag for the tyre repair kit that Audi provides in lieu of spare wheel. To be fair, the uh, boot beneath the bonnet of a rival 911 Turbo Cabriolet is about the same size, though. In second generation form, this R8 Spider is a bona fide supercar and it has a price tag to match. Now, at the time of this test in the spring of 2017, uh, the starting point for this model's pricing was just over £132,000. But once you've added in a few well chosen options, you're more likely to be paying somewhere in the £135,000 to £145,000 bracket at least. Many buyers will pay substantially more. Uh, this optioned up test car, for example, costs over £166,000. 
The open-topped spider bolisile demands a premium of around £9,000 over its coupe counterpart. And as with that fixed-top version, there's no V8 engine option available this time around. Uh, you can, though, ask your Audi centre about the V10 Plus variant that costs about £15,000 more. Uh, the extra money buys you this car's V10 engine and the same uprated 610 PS form that's used in the rival Lamborghini Huracan. Most customers, though, will be more than satisfied with the standard 540 PS V10 model we're trying here. Now, like all R8s, it comes only with one transmission choice, a seven-speed S-Tronic Puddle Shift Auto gearbox. Well, supercars with manual stick shifts. They're so yesterday, aren't they? On to the value proposition that the R8 asking figures represent. Humbler Carrera Cabriolet versions of the Porsche 911 no longer provide direct competition for this car, but there is a 911 Cabrio variant that very definitely does. In fact, the 547 PS 911 Turbo Cabriolet model uh, is arguably this car's closest rival in terms of price and performance. Ultimately, though, that is a bespoiled and more powerful version of a car costing half as much, which won't don't please supercar buyers looking for something, well, really exotic. And that Porsche costs from just under £140,000, as does the other really direct rival that we'd suggest you consider, the Mercedes-AMG GT Roadster. In equivalent GTC, guys, that Merc has a very comparable 564 PS output and almost identical levels of performance. But, again, the question does arise. Does it have quite the exclusive feel of this Audi? Well, many R8 Spider customers will think not. Ferrari's California, well, that certainly satisfies on that score, and its 567 PS engine provides comparable performance to that of this R8. Uh, the California isn't really a very beautiful thing by Maranello standards, though, and it costs over £20,000 more than this Audi. Ideally, if you were going to go for a Ferrari as an alternative, uh, you want the Italian Mark's 488 Spider model, but there, the V8 turbo engine in question develops a 680 PS, which in terms of power is at level up from this Audi, hence the £205,000 price tag. Uh, the same is also true if you're looking at the closest McLaren alternative, uh, the working brand's 659 PS 650S Spider model, which costs around £215,000. A closer exotic brand match uh, to this Audi is found in their 610 PS Lamborghini Huracan we mentioned earlier, uh, which in its only open-topped LP610 4 Spider form costs around £200,000. Uh, while we're on the exotic brands, uh, we'll also mention potential uh, Aston Martin alternatives. Now, that company's V8 Vantage Roadster costs around £105,000, but with 442 PS beneath the bonnet, uh, it doesn't really have the power to compete with this Audi. Aston Martin's 580 PS V12 Vantage Roadster, well, that does, but it lacks the handling finesse of this R8, and it costs around £25,000 more. Now, another potential choice in this segment that wouldn't see which way this Audi went on a racetrack is Bentley's Continental GT V8S convertible, uh, which puts out 535 PS and costs around £165,000. The other alternative choices you could make in this class are certainly very desirable cars, but they don't really either have the dynamic capability or the unique feel of this R8 Spider. Around £100,000 will buy you a BMW M6 convertible with 567 PS, while around £115,000 will get you a Mercedes AMG SL63 with 564 PS. Perhaps more tempting, though, is the top 4.7-litre V8 MC version of Maserati's Grand Cabrio, which costs from around 113000 But that car has only 466 PS to play with, so you'll need a compromise on performance if you're going to choose that one. Well, it'll be very pleasant deciding between all these different options, but if at the end of the process you decide that it is an R8 Spider that you really want, well, we'd certainly understand the reasons for your decision. And it's at this point that you're going to need to know just how generous Audi has been when it comes to standard kit. So let's take a look at that now. Now, the electric folding fabric hood that usually operates from inside the car can also be activated by this advanced key, uh, which facilitates the keyless entry system. Now, also standard is an electric mechanism to retract this rear window and a fabric wind deflector that's stored in the boot. As for other included stuff, well, you get 19-inch wheels, LED headlights and taillights, heat insulating glass and a choice of eight different paint finishes.
Inside, there's a flat bottom, three spoke performance leather steering wheel, uh, climate controlled air conditioning, and fine Nappa leather trim for the heated powered sports seats. Uh, you also get preparation for a tracking system, front and rear parking sensors, power folding mirrors, uh, auto headlamps and wipers, an auto dimming rear view mirror, and an alarm. Driving stuff, well, that includes sports suspension and the Audi Drive Select system, so you can set the throttle, the steering, uh, the gear shift and the stability system responses to exactly suit the way that you want to drive. Uh, plenty of infotainment technology comes included too, courtesy of the brand's top MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch infotainment system. That's integrated neatly into the standard 12.3-inch Audi virtual cockpit display. Now, the MMI package includes sat-nav, a DVD drive, the useful Audi music interface, uh, 10 gigabyte flash memory for music data, two SD card readers, uh, text-to-speak messaging, and a DAB radio playing through the five speakers of the Audi sound system. Plus, there's a Bluetooth interface, and that's complemented by three microphones integrated into the seatbelt so that when you make calls on the move, uh, the recipients will be able to hear you over the roar of that thumping 5.2-litre V10 that's throbbing away behind you. That MMI infotainment package also delivers all the advantages of the Audi Connect system, uh, a data transmission module that lets the driver network with the internet and uses the super-fast LTE, long-term evolution network. Now, the central component here is mobile phone preparation. And the Connect setup will seamlessly interface with your mobile to provide an internet connection, and it will allow passengers to conveniently surf and email with up to eight mobile devices via an integrated WLAN or wireless local area network hotspot. Audi Connect also brings you features such as navigation with images from Google Earth, Google Points of Interest search by voice control, and uh, Google Street View. Connect further adds the Audi Music Stream system with web radio uh, plus access to social media services like Facebook and Twitter. Uh, there's also Audi online traffic information uh, that takes the movement data from the thousands of smartphones and navigation units that are traveling on the road and can inform you of average speeds, predicted journey times and recommended reroutes. Watch your roaming charges though if you're using that abroad. So much for the standard R8 Spider specification. This, though, is very much a bespoke product that owners will want to create to suit their own personal preferences. Now, I'll give you some uh, aesthetic options for doing that in a minute, but to start with, there are some key extra cost boxes that you're going to need to think about ticking. Uh, you'll almost certainly want the optional R8 three-spoke, a flat-bottomed, multifunction, perforated performance leather steering wheel with four operating satellites. <laughs> That is basically the upgraded steering wheel that should be standard. Uh, this extra cost design gives you four satellite rotary controls off the wheel rather than merely two. Now with the extra two, one is a manual exhaust flap control while the other delivers a selectable performance mode that features dry, wet or snow options and that will allow you to better adjust responses of your R8 to specifically suit the prevailing road conditions. So, on to the key optional driving orientated features, and we'll start with a feature we'd certainly want, Audi Magnetic Ride. Now, some writers have questioned whether this adaptive suspension setup's worth paying extra for, but all they have probably done is thrash the car around a smooth racetrack on a press launch. Many likely owners will be using their R8s every day, and for such regular use, the option of being able to switch the ride into a comfort orientated mode via the drive select system will be very welcome indeed, especially with the firmer passive setup. We would take this and the optional sport exhaust system that, at the touch of a steering wheel button, um, dials up the tailpipe burble to a point that really will and all your neighbours on a still clear morning like this one. Brilliant. We are less sure about the dynamic steering system, which is a pity because the electric steering isn't this car's strongest point, and it would be nice if this optional setup improved it. Unfortunately, though, many feel, as we do, that the variable speed-sensitive assistance of that dynamic package fails to do that. So try before you buy is our advice. Having said that, though, if you do take our advice and choose the magnetic ride and the sport exhaust, uh, the dynamic steering option comes as part of a Sport Plus pack for hardly any extra money. So unless you really don't like it, it's probably worth having anyway.
Uh, the other key driving feature to consider is whether you need to upgrade the LED headlights with the Audi laser light system. Now here, an extra laser light high beam supplements the LED high beam at speeds of over 37 miles an hour, lighting your way ahead for up to 600 meters. And this feature also comes packaged up with uh, dynamic front indicators that sweep from inside to out. Now, before we get into the nitty-gritty of aesthetic personalization, there are a few other extra cost options you might like to consider. Uh, most owners go for the Audi phone box option that boosts your smartphone's reception for in-car use and includes a charging mat to top up the battery. Uh, less justifiable is the fact that Audi charges extra for the smartphone interface package, and you'll need that to be able to access this car's infotainment setup via the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto Media Connect activity system so you can uh, use your favorite apps on the MMI screen. Uh, like most supercars, this one also comes with the option of ceramic brakes. And just like most other rivals, this is an extremely pricey thing to specify. In the case of this Audi, uh, it's just under £8,000. Still, if you are going to be regularly taking this car on track days, paying extra for the Audi branded anthracite colored calipers could still represent money well spent. Uh, talking of taking to the track, an R8 driving experience day at Silverstone comes included in the price. And on the subject of days out, you can, if you wish, pay to go and see your R8 being built in Germany at Audi's Heilbronn factory. On to exterior styling. Now let's start with the fabric hood. And now as well as the usual black, this also comes in either brown or red at no extra charge. Uh, your choice of color would of course depend on your choice of paintwork. And if you don't like any of the standard shades, Audi offers one optional color, Argus Brown to uh, R8 Spider buyers. Now the other key personalizable exterior element lies with these lovely side blades. Now they come in your choice of silver, black or gray at no charge, or you can pay extra for a titanium matte grey side blade finish. Alternatively, the Audi exclusive program will deliver paint work and side blade colouring in just about any shade you want, however garish your taste might be. So, grey and bright orange, anyone? <laughs> Wheels, of course, are another really important thing to get right. So there's a wide choice of 19 and 20 inch rims. Uh, we've got the 20 inch 10 spoke wire rims here with a diamond cut finish. Once you've got all that sorted to your satisfaction, your Audi Centre salesperson will want to talk to you about the distinctive titanium black or gloss carbon exterior trimming that most R8 buyers seem to want. Now, the exterior mirror housings can feature either of those two finishings. Um, if your preference is for gloss carbon, then you can also get that exclusive material surrounding the air outlets on the hood compartment, as on this car, or have it added into the engine compartment. If you want to go further, then to full-on styling packs beckon. Uh, the titanium black one gives you that shiny finishing around the radiator grille, the front spoiler, the rear diffuser, the air outlets on the hood compartment and the tailpipes. The gloss carbon exterior styling plaque that we have here includes that finishing for the side blades, for the exterior mirror housings, uh, for the front spoiler and the rear diffuser. More gloss carbon options are possible inside. Here we've got the extended inlays in gloss carbon pack that gives you that trimming around the air vents and around the instrument binnacle. Now you want to get the look of your fascia inlays to your taste too. Now these come with an anthracite finish as standard, but at extra cost, you could alternatively have them finished in um, matte titanium, piano black, or as you guessed it, uh, gloss carbon. That's what we've got here, and it's complemented by optional carbon atlas inlays. It's lovely. What else should we cover in here? Um, well, uh, we'll tell you that if you want, the standard sports seats can be replaced with track-style bucket seats that can feature colour-customizable shell backs. Uh, these slightly comfier ordinary sports seats, though, have the advantage of being compatible with Isofix child seat fastenings, and they can be upgraded with a stitched diamond quilting design, as well as pneumatic seat backrest and side bolster adjustment. Um, whatever your seat choice, uh, you'll probably want to look at the optional extended fine Nappa leather package that covers uh, the dashboard, uh, the door armrests, and, well, much of the rest of the cabin with fine Nappa leather.
And to complete the effect, well, you could trim the steering wheel and the gear selector with either exclusive leather or black suede and maybe have the air vents painted in body colour. Um, going further, you could also add in personalisable illuminated door sill trims and they can be finished in aluminium or, if you don't like that, in matte or gloss carbon. Exclusive branded floor mats are also available and you can even line the luggage compartment in Alcantara. What else? Um, well, most R8 buyers tend to tick the box for the driver assistance pack, although the two elements that includes, uh, a reversing camera and cruise control, really should be standard. A feature we wouldn't mind paying extra for, though, is the Bang & Olufsen sound system. A 13-speaker, 550-watt setup. It comes with a 16-channel amplifier, a subwoofer and LED accent speaker lighting. Here we've got that desirable B&O setup included as part of an optional sound and color comfort pack. That also includes three other interior features mentioned earlier. Uh, the extended fine Nappa leather package, the pneumatic seat backrest and side bolster adjustment for the sports seats and illuminated aluminium door sills. So let's finish this section by talking about safety. Now surprisingly Audi has decided not to equip this car with the kind of cutting edge camera based safety features are now becoming commonplace on much humbler cars. Uh, for example, one of those autonomous braking setups that scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards and which will help you to brake to avoid them. Uh, now the Ingolstadt brand makes the excuse that cars of this kind are all about light weight and that adding those kind of features would uh, hurt the R8 on the scales. For us though, that's a poor excuse. These are electronic rather than mechanical systems after all. To be fair to Audi, you don't get this kind of tech in obvious rivals either, but that's no excuse for not taking the lead and fitting it here. It's not very Vorsprung durch Technik, is it? What you do get, though, are all the usual electronic aids for braking, traction and stability control, including an ESC system that now includes torque vectoring for sharper corner turning. Uh, twin front and side airbags are also included, but spider buyers have to do without the curtain airbags that are fit to the equivalent coupe body style. Should the worst happen, then two strong steel sections pre-tensioned by springs serve as rollover protection. The running costs associated with this spider body style are only fractionally greater than those of the R8 Coupe model, despite this open top model's extra 125 kilos of weight, which is just as well because this model line already has enough to deal with when it comes to keeping running costs in check. Audi's decision to ignore a switch to turbocharge power for this second generation R8 was an undeniably brave one and the consequences are obvious if you take a look at what it's possible to achieve in this segment when it comes to running costs. Let's get specific. An R8 Spider V10 is around 25% less economical than a similarly powerful Porsche 911 Turbo Cabriolet delivering 24.1 mpg on the combined cycle as opposed to the far more creditable 30.4 mpg figure you get from that 911. Mind you, not all turbocharged competitors improve on this Audi showing by that kind of margin. In fact, uh, direct rivals like the Mercedes-AMG uh, GTC Roadster and Ferrari's California T actually deliver a very similar fuel consumption showing. And now, if you are comparing against the 911 Turbo, this Audi's deficit will be partially disguised in everyday use by the fact that its fuel tank is a very usefully sized 83 litres, much bigger than the 68 litre item that you have to put up within the Porsche. Slightly more pressing for potential R8 Spider buyers might be the tax implications of this 540 PS model, 277 grams per kilometre CO2 figure. Uh, the resulting better than kind tax rate is 37%. For reference, a comparable Mercedes-AMG GTC Roadster manages 259 grams per kilometre, a Ferrari California T delivers 250 grams, and that Porsche 911 Turbo 198 grams per kilometre. To be fair, we should also mention that comparable models from Maserati and Aston Martin would be a lot pricier to keep on the road than an R8. Audi's perspective on the issues of uh, R8 efficiency is predictably rather different. Uh, the company points out that the r all fireworks of high revving, naturally aspirated power have to cost you somewhere. And in this case, their engineers have worked very hard to minimise the pain in the wallet region. 
Primarily, their work in doing this has centred around the adoption of the clever COD, cylinder on demand technology, that the company pioneered in its V8 models. Uh, when one of the four upper gears is engaged, this shuts down uh, the cylinders on either the left or the right back of the engine, which means that at low speeds, when you're driving off throttle, you'll probably be at the wheel of a V5 rather than a V10 R8. There's more too. At under 34 miles an hour, when the drive select system is set in its comfort mode, uh, the Astronic Auto gearbox switches over the three wheeling operation when you release the accelerator pedal, uh, leaving the car to coast until you touch the throttle again. Plus, when you stop temporarily, uh, say in traffic or at the lights, there's a start stop system to cut the engine. It's all led to some useful improvements over the running cost figures that were provided by the final V10 versions of the previous generation. R8 Spider. Uh, that car having been around 13% thirstier and dirtier in its standard form. The fact this model is uh, 25 kilos lighter thanks to its CFRP, carbon fibre reinforced polymer construction, obviously helps here. This material is easier to recycle than conventional metals and along with the more efficient engineering will, Audi says, allow this car to cut its greenhouse gas emissions by 2.6 tonnes over its lifetime in comparison with its predecessor. Um, what else? Well, uh, you'll be able to get your R8 serviced at any Audi dealership and there's a choice of fixed or flexible prepaid servicing plans depending on whether you cover more or less than 10,000 miles a year. On a fixed plan, you'll need an oil change service every 9,000 miles or every year and an inspection service every 19,000 miles or every two years. Garage visits with this Audi will certainly be expensive. Uh, three R8 services are likely to set you back almost three and a half thousand pounds. Talking of maintenance, costs here can be kept down if you go for one of the prepaid servicing plans that you'll be offered at initial purchase. Uh, in fact, this car can even book its own services uh, via an Audi Connect safety and service system app. As well as providing uh, emergency calling and online roadside assistance, this feature can, at the appropriate time, send a service request direct to your local dealer. Alternatively, uh, you could sign up for Audi Service Request, which uses the onboard Wi-Fi to enable your car to communicate with your dealer. Um, as your R8 Spider nears the time when work will be needed, then the diagnostics will alert your nominated local Audi Centre, who will then contact you to book in a convenient time. And another neat service you'll dealer can offer you is the so-called Audi cam system. Now here, technicians carrying out workshop inspections on your R8 can focus a handheld Audi cam camera on specific problems and accompany the image with a verbal diagnosis to create footage that can be sent to your computer or to your smartphone. And that way, you'll know exactly what work you're authorizing on your car. On to the warranty. Now we're slightly disappointed by the three-year 60,000 mile warranty though, particularly given that the mechanically identical and supposedly more temperamental Lamborghini Huracan Spider uh, comes with a four-year unlimited mileage package. Uh, the three-year deal you get with an equivalent Porsche 911 Turbo is also unlimited mileage too. On to residuals. Now, in total, only around 30 R8s are each day being hand-built at Audi's Heilbronn factory uh, near the company's Neckarzum base. So there's enough rarity value about this car to keep residuals buoyant. Expect depreciation to be a fraction behind that of a Porsche 911 Turbo, but ahead of something like a Mercedes-AMG GT Roadster. And finally, insurance premiums, well, they will be as high as they inevitably are for any supercar. Rated at a top of the shop, Group 50E. We absolutely loved the Mark II model R8 Coupe, but we're now struggling to think why we might buy one. The reason is that this Spider version can provide so much more and now do so with so few compromises. All right, so Audi's four rings don't yet give this car the rarefied appeal of rival Lamborghini or Ferrari competitors, but in most meaningful respects, this second-generation open-topped R8 model can match them car for car. Unlike its Italian rivals, it feels bulletproof. And unlike, say, a Porsche 911 Turbo Cabriolet, it makes a six-figure statement. Now, Audi has clearly benchmarked both approaches and blended Latin exclusivity with Teutonic 
day-to-day -day usability, creating a finished product that's difficult to beat if you want a car of this kind that you could drive every day. Now, don't get us wrong, this R8 Spider isn't quite as agile as its coupe counterpart. That fixed top model is, after all, still 40% stiffer. Uh, this convertible variant also comes with a significant price premium. And, like the coupe, its normally aspirated engine struggles to deliver acceptable levels of running cost efficiency. But we'll take that. Now, after all, it's because of that normally aspirated V10 that this car is as desirable as it is. And it's because of that unit that you'd be so tempted to choose this spider body style. You'll want to listen to that gloriously throbbing soundtrack over and over again. In years to come, we're going to look back on this power plant as one of the last great engines of its era. And look back on this R8 as one of the great open-topped Audis of all time. There's nothing quite like it.